Okay. Welcome to the regular trustee meeting for Monday, uh, December 9th, 2019. Um, I'd like to have everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, board. I'd like to add under the administrator before architect uh, a proclamation for Mr. Roberts and a proclamation for the donation of the American flag you see over there. Who was that again? The answer? Uh, administrator. Okay. Is that the same one or are they two different? Two separate. Two separate. Thank yes. you. And that's all I have. Any other changes or amendments? <coughs> Motion. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as modified. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to excuse Mr. Roberts from today's regular trustee meeting. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. And I'll make a motion to accept the general ledger report in the amount of $805,858.92. I'm sorry, I'll repeat that. $805,858.92 for the December 4th, 2019 <laughs> payroll. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Make a motion to accept the payment listing reports in the amount of $41,565.76 for warrants through December 6, 2019. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. I'll make a motion to accept the November 25th, 2019 regular trustee meeting minutes. I'll second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Are there any citizens here wishing to make any comments? Seeing none, we'll move to old business. No old business, any new business? No new business? Um, we'll turn to the administrator. Uh, thank you, board. I do have two copies here of a proclamation um, for Mr. Roberts and his time with us as uh, on the Board of Zoning Appeals and trustee. <coughs> All right, it's my uh, pleasure to present the following proclamation. Whereas members of the Beaver Creek Township Board of Township Trustees serve the township and its citizens in positions of significant personal responsibility and with significant depends, de demands upon their time and their lives of their families. And whereas Jeff Roberts began serving the township as a volunteer with Beaver Creek Board of Zoning Appeals for a period of 10 years beginning in 2005. And whereas Jeff Roberts has served as a member of said Board of Township Trustees for a period of four years. And whereas Jeff Roberts was a member of the Ohio Township Association and Greene County Township Association and whereas Jeff Roberts served as the Township Representative to the Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission of Greene County, and whereas Jeff Roberts served on the Fire Station 65 Design Committee, and whereas fellow members of the Board of Township Trustees of Beaver Creek Township wish to express their gratitude to Mr. Roberts for his dedication and integrity and service to Beaver Creek Township and his citizens. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Beaver Creek Township, Greene County, Ohio, hereby proclaim their gratitude to Mr. Roberts for his service to the citizens of Beaver Creek Township during his four years as, member, as a member of the Board of Township Trustees. I second that. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Board. There'll be two copies there, one for the resolution book and then one for the Get back to Mr. Roberts. And the next item that was added uh, was the donation of the American flag. Um, I'll let Mr. Kretz explain the history of the American flag and then uh, board I'd recommend we take just a few minutes to, for the elected officials to take a picture with the American flag. Great. <coughs> uh, so this is a um, essentially this flag was being donated by a gentleman named Rob Etherton. Um, he owns a company in uh, Illinois that is called Etherton Hardwoods and 
Um, they are a, the company was founded by Marine Corps veterans. Um, Mr. Etherton is uh, a Marine veteran himself. And they have um, essentially developed a very unique uh, wood charring preservation process. And so this was handcrafted by uh, Marine Corps veterans with PTSD. And so it's been donated to the township. Um, and he's asked that it hang at the new station 65. Uh, when it's completed, um, and that uh, he did have one other request, uh, Chief, I think I mentioned, just um, that it's on display somewhere it's not placed in storage um, while that station's being built. Um, so it'll be in the uh, public area upstairs until 65 is completed. Perfect. Great. So with that, I'll present, uh, I make a motion to approve a resolution accepting the donation of a handmade American flag, um, whereas a high revised code Section 505.10A allows the Board of Township of Trustees to accept on behalf of the township the donation of any real or personal property for any township use. Whereas Mr. Rob Etherton of Etherton Hardwoods wishes to donate a hardwood American flag handcrafted using the ancient Japanese Shosugi Bond technique valued at $563. Whereas Mr. Etherton is a United States Marine Corps veteran and his company employs and supports military veterans and charities. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Beaver Creek Township Trustees graciously accepts the donated flag and thanks Mr. Etherton and his employees for the gift and for their service to our nation on behalf of the township. Furthermore, uh, be it resolved that the flag will be proudly be displayed at Fire Station 65 upon its completion. And further be it resolved that the donated item be added to the township's inventory in accordance with the township policy and practice. I'll second that. Mr. Krebs. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you. Madam Board, I'll ask you, the elected officials, to take a picture with it. Yeah. I will send a copy of the proclamation plus the picture. Go for it. <laughs> Okay, moving to the um, thank you board uh, fir first item uh, is on page four of your packet uh, including the budget justification um, is to hire an architect to evaluate uh, 851 uh, we do have some uh, security concerns there uh, as well as some end-of-life uh, heating and air uh, concerns uh, what will happen is uh, by hiring this architect, they'll meet with each department uh, and the employees of the office, look at their current needs, uh, future needs, and make a recommendation to the township um, for modification of the building uh, that will also provide additional security to the building, uh, as well as address our heating and air concerns that we have uh, as well in the building. I do have a motion on page five. <coughs> I think this is a good approach to look at everything in the building, make sure um, top to bottom, make sure that we're taking in everything instead of doing it piecemeal. So um, I don't have any questions on this, but I like that concept.
make a motion to approve purchase request 10431 to K4 Architecture for preliminary scope and programming in the amount of $7,500 and authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. Second. One comment, um, I would also ask them, and I, I'm confident they will, but make sure that they take um, a look at anything as far as ADA compliance and the rest of the space. Yeah. Um, so we do that all at one time. Right. Absolutely. Mr. Kratz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 10 of your packet as the biweekly report for the sheriff's office, followed by on page 30, the monthly report, uh, November monthly report for the sheriff's office. Are there any questions? I did have a couple questions. Um, on the beginning of your report, it shows two hang-ups. When you get a hang-up, do you um, check the number that was created with, and was it not the same number? It was two different days, and there was two hang-ups, and I was wondering if, it, if you had checked to make sure you checked the number, and number one and the, number two wasn't the same person or same number calling. So what you're saying is, is a 911 hang-up? Yes. And, 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 and that's what we'll, we'll respond. We'll respond to those always. They're, they're never... The not not going out there, but when we go and respond to them, uh, it generates a report that, that you're seeing. And your question is that, are, are we? Well, I didn't know if you had gone out to re respond. I to personally it. did not. Our, 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 our somebody deputies. did. Yes. Yeah, so and, that's, and that's what generates the report. It just put a flare on me that if there was the same person hang up, hung up, hung up twice, there might have been some activity that they were forced to hang the phone up. We, we always go and check those. That, right. that those, those are those whether are they hang up or not. You whether whether they hang up or not. A nine one one call generates uh, oftentimes, and in, in, uh, if it's a business or whatnot, um, that you have to dial nine to get out of a business. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. so they might inadvertently dial the the nine nine um, or, or something like that. Um, but it doesn't matter if it's if it's that. It doesn't matter if we've had previous calls. If there's a, if there's a phone glitch, sometimes we can have five or six of those in a row in the same day just okay. because there's a, a glitch that they're working through. But we're not going to not go even in those cases. We'll, we will always go make contact with somebody and make sure that they're okay. And then the other question I had was, on this traffic stops, do you coordinate with uh, the Ohio um, Department of uh, um, State, Patrol. State Patrol and Beaver Creek Police when you watch 35 or how's that work because all I know is I, I haven't been seeing too much too many patrols lately on 35 and people are running the light consistently that always happens but also the speed is up pretty high on 35 coming from off the ramp on 675 to factory and I just was wondering how the coordination goes between the three law enforcement areas. We coordinate. We coordinate when we can. Um, we're going to take care of the areas that we're primarily responsible for. So in this case, would be the township area and the 35 that, that runs through there. Um, we'll coordinate with highway patrol so that we don't have redundancy. You don't have a cruiser at, at one turnaround and then another one mm -hmm. a half mile up the road or, or something like that and just let them know we'll be out working that, that area. But um, as far as actually not seeing, actually our patrols are actually up. Um, in those areas as well too okay. over the last over the last month they've actually increased all right that's all the questions I had thank you sir <coughs> thank you board next item starts on page 42 of your packet is the bi-weekly report for the HR are there any questions did you have any update for us with regards to uh, BWC or talk about that later okay Great. I just I had a comment um, Trish um, that you've done an excellent job on the wellness program I wanted to state that publicly that we, we appreciate all the work you've done on that and the other thing that I saw in your report that I appreciated that most HR people do not do and I was pleased to see that you did do this is that you helped a, an employee on a medicine uh, denial so I'm assuming that you called and tried to break through some of the barriers to see why they couldn't get the kind of medicine they needed in that process. And it's confusing for so many consumers. And for you to take the time to do that, I appreciate that because it, it's outside your bounds, really. But I appreciate the fact that you did that and helped somebody because um, 
it's an it's a need and I'm I'm glad that you stepped up to that. Thank you. Thank you, board. Uh, next item is on page 45 of your packet is the biweekly report for the zoning department. Are there any questions? I had none other than the normal question as far as any awareness of any major developments that have anything new that's come in as far as a new phase or two or three phases of a new development. Is this a new phase or is it existing? That everything pretty much as planned or as expected, no, no extraordinary re uh, requests or filings. Okay. Thank you. And and I just had one question and that was, you know, I still see that school bus on that one property that's farther back but it's still on the property line. Um, it's not parked in a garage or and I thought we had to they, they had to get a license on that bus to park it in the yard I think I thought that was zoned ag but go ahead I'm sorry which property it, is this it's on five Beaver. acre agricultural piece on Beaver, Beaver Valley mm -hmm. yeah. Nathaniel's Grove yeah, mm -hmm. yeah um, let's see if I can recall the, uh, the it, since it's zoned ag, he's allowed to have them on there, but the buses have to be registered with the state of Ohio. And um, is it registered? Because there is a bus that's sitting on the property line again, but way back. It, my understanding was that it has a rear plate, but not a front plate. We, we don't have any more information than that. Now, what we can do, since we're not allowed to enter onto the property without the property owner's permission, we could uh, take a picture of that plate and while BMV would not tell us who owns it or what the status of the vehicle is, they can tell us whether that plate is registered to that address. That much information we can get. Um, and if it's not registered to that address, then we can contemplate action to have them uh, have it removed. But being zoned ag makes that a little bit difficult, especially if the owner of the property says that he or she is putting it to some agricultural use, which we can't verify because right. we can't go on there. So um, since we've seen a plate on the back end of the bus, we've kind of left it alone. Now, if, if the board would prefer that we take some additional action, we'd be happy to do that. Is the music complaints that are coming in regard to that property have not been about the vehicles it's there. Music. They've been about noise. And it's still... So still happening well we met with uh, the two of the concerned neighbors and advised them for us to actually take it to and we met with the um, fairborn prosecutor that oversees our jurisdiction um, the debt when they call 911 on the complaint or call the 90 arm number and the, our deputies go out the deputies have to go inside the house and and witness the loud music from inside the house um, I don't think that's occurring. I think a lot of residents are not calling our deputies to come in. Um, we can hear it from the street. Uh, however, uh, according to the prosecutor, we need to also hear it from inside the home to be declared uh, essentially a nuisance at that point. Inside the home of the complaint. Right. Correct. Not a complaint. Not, right. yeah. and, and I'm not aware that there's been any recent action there. We haven't um, had any recent complaints about that noise. And in the last couple of times I've driven the subdivision um, for other purposes, but I glance over and the doorway in <coughs> which the loudspeakers had been placed has been closed. Um, my sense is that the nuisance has abated, but um, we haven't gotten any recent complaints. It was several months ago that we were okay. out there with the with the owners, with, with the complaining neighbors. Thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, board. Uh, next item starts on page 51. Uh, this is to approve a three-year contract with Agile Networks for Internet Service. Um, actually, by moving to Agile, which is on state term pricing, uh, we do have to send a notification to get out of our agreement. Uh, we have that time. We'll have to make that, obviously, today um, with uh, Data Yard. However, uh, it's cheaper than our current uh, Data Yard contract and doubles the speed. Mm. Um, this will be for this location. Uh, we did approve earlier this year the fiber line for uh, Time Warner for our phone system. 
Uh, so these two systems will work as a failsafe. So uh, if the phone system would go down, they would come over to the agile network and vice versa if our uh, infrastructure went down here for networks and computers and uh, security system and everything else, it will fail safe over to uh, Station 64. We did confirm with Agile that it will be a separate line from Time Warner because we wanted redundancy, but uh, we didn't want to use the same carrier for both in case it was a uh, network uh, business outage. So it is a separate line that will be coming in here, not owned by Time Warner. So we'll have the Time Warner location at Station 64 uh, and the current fiber line that comes in here uh, just across the hall. So budget justification starts on page 51. This is cost allocated and I have a motion on page 52. And how does this work with the <coughs> microwave? So the information uh, that comes in for our network uh, comes into this location and then it goes out the uh, microwave system. So from here up to 64, so it's the connection, um, then to all the other stations. Uh, there is a, also another connection from here over to Crane County Airport. Uh, and a connection here to the city of Beaver Creek for the um, New World CAD system. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 10469 to Agile Networks for three years of internet <coughs> service in the amount of $29,700 and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Qu Brent. Discussion, Sorry. real quick. Is the 29.7, is that per that's year? That's the full third that's three years three of contract. Years. Okay. Just right. to no, clarify. Okay. Yeah, it's um, Agile Networks is $825 per month. Okay. Mr. Krebs. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. And I'll make a motion to authorize the Township Administrator to terminate the existing contract with Data Yard, send the appropriate notice, and sign for the board. Second. Mr. Krebs. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you, Board. Next item is on page 54 of your packet is the IT biweekly report. Um, and on page 56 is an updated uh, current, uh, as of last Thursday's, uh, tickets for the township. Are there any questions? I have no questions. Thank you, Board. Uh, next item is uh, a resolution to proceed to, uh, for the Board of Elections for a uh, renewal, uh, continuing levy for our road department. Uh, we did receive, and it's in your packet, the uh, certification back on uh, page 61 is the certification back from the county auditor. We do have a resolution here for you to proceed. Uh, we will send this resolution as long, along with the ballot language, uh, which is on page 62 of your packet. And Mr. Parks, I just would like you to explain to the public um, about it being renewal. We're not asking for any additional funds. No Is additional taxes. The only change would be we're going from a five year to a continuing to give us a stabilized <coughs> uh, budget number <coughs> moving forward. I don't have any other questions, Mr. Krebs. I make a motion to approve the resolution to proceed to the Board of Elections as presented. Second. Mr. Krebs. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you, Board. Uh, next item is on page 57 of your packet, is, uh, along with a resolution to surplus equipment. And we pass it with our motions on page 57. Just to pass as presented. Um, Mr. Parks, since I uh, saw the list and there's a lot of like desks and chairs and things like that, after we've um, made this a surplus property, is there any way we can contact the Red Cross or any of uh, city or township people that lost furniture and things, homes in the our community and let them know that these things are available? I'm sure we could. A lot of the stuff that's on this list is is broken stuff it's just okay. a or conglomeration of when we move from one building to another well it got dumped in the white building um, but as far as the the list we could some of the desks or some of those I mean if somebody wanted them I would like to just Mr. Um, Edward Harris I would <coughs> like to at least let them know or how we can communicate that 
Yeah, so if, if uh, by Ohio Revised Code, if, if it is salvageable and, and we want to donate it, we still have to advertise um, that it will be a donation to allow other groups who are interested. Uh, are you suggesting a donation or suggesting that we let people know that it's for sale? I Some of these things can be bought for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. We, we will put it on gov deals. Yeah. We'll but see, a lot deals. of people don't know yeah. about we gov can reach deals, out. so citizens. Yeah. I, I mean, just because there was... I saw furniture there, yeah. a desk and some chairs. <coughs> it may be possible for people that don't have anything, you yeah. know, a desk might be heavy helpful or, you know, just to let yeah. our citizens it, know. Uh, Normally we can, I wouldn't we can do this. put out something on social media, the social media, I apologize. Um, and also there is a list on our website as well to, okay. to get to gut deals. I think social media would be good because most of them, they're not looking at those kind of sites at right. this and, point. And actually, we'll go through and the stuff that's worth putting on gut deals that's not broken beyond repair because mm -hmm. I can tell you like some of these room dividers are left over from the fiscal office when it used to be at 1981 right. and they've been moved I don't know probably 10 times and they're not worth scrap mm -hmm. even so we can make the effort <coughs> the once you have the link if you circulate it to us mm -hmm. um, via email through the gov deals mm -hmm. um, they can forward that Laura Mercer is uh, good friend of mine and also she's been assigned from Sinclair as the um, director essentially of efforts for the Dayton Foundation so she's been given a two-year assignment to handle that so I can flip it to her yeah, that's um, a good but idea. you can circulate we can do it. the rotary and yeah. the chamber and you can circulate it to mm -hmm. whoever else okay yeah. <coughs> thank you board we did we, no, we, did we vote on yet. that no not yet He has to make the motion. Thank you. I thought I made the motion. Anyway, hold on. If not, I'll make a motion to approve a resolution to surplus property as no longer needed or un or is no longer needed or unfit for use as presented. Second. Mr. Krebs. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you, board. Thank uh, you. Next item is on page fifty seven of your packet is purchase request for a guardrail. Uh, with the motion, I have an updated motion because we did receive another uh, quote, which uh, it is cheaper. So we have that here for you. Uh, this is to add guardrail to the uh, road that is own, owned and maintained by the township up to the airport. Um, there was some modifications to the slope due to the water and sewer project. <coughs> um, the airport read it reached out to us, had some concerns about putting some guardrail up. We did went up there and looked at it, said, yep, they definitely need some guardrail based on the new slopes off the roadway. That is steep. That is steep, yes. <laughs> and the, the grading issue is our issue, or it was whoever put the water and sewer it's line in? It's when they put the water and sewer line in. Um, I guess my question is, why are we paying for it? And well, not what used to be in. there was a bunch of small trees and honeysuckle. Sure. That was shortly like right off the edge of the road that would keep somebody from going all the way down in mm -hmm. well once that was all removed there's nothing stopping you from the top now all the way to the bottom so they did plant grass and, and yeah. uh, so it's not a, it's not a grading issue it's just no. the natural guardrail it's the natural gone. Yeah. Okay. yeah the natural okay. guardrail has gone okay those don't work too well <laughs> <laughs> in the first place I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 10168 to Lake Erie Construction Company for guardrail installation on Dumford Airport Road in an amount not to exceed $7,900 and authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Krebs. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. Thank you, board. Next item is on page 67 of your packet is the by report. Are there any questions? I had no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. Next item under the fire department is on page 68, and it's a request to send two personnel to the 2020 CPSE Excellence Conference. Uh, budget justifications on page 68, uh, with three motions on page 69. Um, I do have some questions on this one. Yes, ma'am. Where is it at? I believe it's in Orlando. I'm not certain. Okay. Yeah. Well. I'm going by memory. 
I actually looked it up when I saw Carib Royale Resort. That's what I, so. <laughs> That's what I thought was so. in Mexico or something. No, no. <laughs> it's I, Dominican. We wouldn't even ask for something outside of uh, no. continental U.S. Um, All right. And then I did the math, and it was the 159 room. Um, so that was the lowest price room that was available through the package for yeah. two people. So. And it's unfortunate that they choose destinations like that for these types of conferences. It really kind of hamstrings us for our ability to attend. But So um, do you get two separate rooms? Is that how you do, or are you guys bunked up? Um, I believe they get two separate rooms. And at this point, um, we're debating actually on whether we'll be sending one or two people this year. So we put in for two. So not to exceed. Um, exactly. But uh, right now, there's a, a good chance that it may just be one attendee for this year. Okay. All right. That's all the questions I had. No, I actually pulled it. I looked at the dates. I did the math on the rooms. I figured <laughs> it was two people. Then I did the math on the airfare and the per diem, and I was like, okay, I understand. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you did, that. You did a good job because I was, <laughs> I was just going to question the chief on it. I, I saw the numbers, and I'm like, whoa, I think they need to bunk up. I was like, hey. Yeah, it's, I wish they would pick less ostentatious. Most of the expenses in your travel, so a yes, good sir. portion of it. So I'll make a motion to approve. Purchase request 10127 to Center for Public Safety Excellence for the Excellence Conference in an amount not to exceed $1,530 and to authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Craig. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. I'm making a motion to approve purchase request 10413 to Creve Royale Resort via PNC Visa for hotel rooms for CPSE Excellence Conference in an amount not to exceed $1,272 and to authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. And I'll second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Waller. Yes. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 10418 to PNC Visa for airfare travel expense and meal allowance in the amount not to exceed $1,852 and authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. And second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, board. Uh, next item is a purchase request for ballistic safety equipment. Um, obviously, this is something that uh, we've been talking about for a couple years now based on the uh, active shooter training uh, budget justification starts on page 69 with a motion on page 70 chiefs here to answer any questions and as mr. Zaharia for reference this started about a year and a half ago in our 2018 um, active threat training we were evaluating uh, new equipment uh, and so they've been doing research and um, coming up with a plan for it between then and now um, the one significant change is we're going from essentially eight sets of ballistic protection to 25. That 25 will make sure that every first responder on duty, so not okay. reserve or anything else, but on duty would have that type of protection. And what we've seen in our trainings over the years is we're not going to be able to determine ahead of time who's going to end up first on scene and have to be in those positions. And we're actually, unfortunately, as we've seen even uh, here in, in the Miami Valley recently, um, we're in positions where we may end up with not necessarily a large scene like downtown Dayton, but um, domestic violence or scenes like that where we'll want them for crews for smaller incidents, uh, but to have the same type of protection. So that's why we're expanding the 25 cents. And that, you answered my question because I didn't, I was wondering where did you get the 25? So yeah, thank you. 24 for the on duty personnel and then one for the uh, first responding chief officer. Okay. No other questions for me? I'll make a motion to approve purchase request 10463 to AE David Company for 25 sets of ballistic safety equipment in the amount of $26,430.75 and to authorize the Township Administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Kretz? Yes. Ms. Waller? Yes. Thank you, board. And then as part of that, we need to surplus the old one, so you can do it as presented. I have a question on this piece of it. Yes, um, can we surplus these, or you know, if a civilian buys these vests um, and then uses them in an incident like Oregon District? We, we can surplus them. The disposal method is what we're looking into. So that's where actually we'll probably be reaching out to our law enforcement uh, officers to uh, find out the best way to get rid of them. So we do need the permission to surplus so that we can either throw them away destroy them put them on gov deals whatever the appropriate method is and then we will find the appropriate method and we'll work with law enforcement on that 
I would just prefer personally that we don't put them on gov deals and sell them. Yeah, so and what I don't we only sell them, we restrict the sale to another um, jurisdiction. And so that's what we're going to look at. The other thing is we may run into with the other jurisdiction is these do have a life uh, a allowable lifespan. And so if we're at or exceeding that, we wouldn't sell it either. We'd want to destroy it because we're not going to sell another fire department or law enforcement agency equipment that's out of date. But yes, we will not put it on the civilian market. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make a motion uh, to approve a resolution finding certain township equipment to be surplus and authorize the fire chief to dispose of it. Second. Mr. Fritz. Yes. Ms. Lawless. Yes. Thank you, board. Uh, next item is on page 71 of your packet is the bi weekly report. Are there any questions? I had no other questions. I think the only real highlight is we have surpassed uh, 20, 2018's numbers so far this year. So um, we're on track for possibly hitting 7,000 uh, calls for service this year. Which means I'm going to have to adjust all my charts for a higher <laughs> Y axis. <laughs> I had no questions on the report. Thanks for all the efforts uh, for this year, and uh, stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, board. That's all I have for right now. <coughs> Legal? Nothing at this time. Fiscal officer. I have two things, and I'll let, if you have questions, I mean, the first one's pretty explanatory. It's just moving the pay date from January 1st, 2020 to January 2nd, so the banks will be closed. A motion on page 75. I have no questions. <coughs> I make a motion that Beaver Creek Township reschedule the Wednesday, January 1, 2020 uh, pay date to Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. This rescheduled pay day will cover salaries and wages earned from December 12, 2019 through Wednesday, December 25, 2019. Second. Mr. Kratz. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Lawless. Yes. Thank you. And then um, the copier in the fiscal office is due to be replaced. It's it's just um, not doing the job as quickly or as efficiently as we needed to. And so we went out and looked at um, Donald McCarthy, is who the township uses. So we and we've been happy with their service and their calls. And um, so we reached out to them again to give us an estimate on the. Uh, And this is uh, to this is to lease a new copier. Is the way I understand the motion. That's what Correct. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so they provide, and it, they it provide is the copier. We pro we essentially pay for the toner and paper. Correct. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, just to let you know, it is on the network. So sometimes I'll send stuff over there. Sure. It's a shared or pooled yeah. resource. Yep. Okay. And when does the sixty months start and end? I assume as soon as you sign the new agreement and introduce anything. Okay. Uh, when the the current the contract has expired? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do we need to put a start and end date in the motion is where I'm heading? I don't think so. As soon as the equipment comes in. Okay. <coughs> I'll make a motion uh, to approve the request to lease the Sharp MX2651 copier in the amount uh, not to exceed $10,113.60 for a 60 month lease from Donald McCarthy Enterprises, subject to legal review of the contract, and to authorize the township administrator to sign for the board. Second. Mr. Kretz. Yes. Ms. Lawless. Yes. Thank you. MVRPC um, reports um, from the trustees. Uh, we had a great meeting uh, last week. Um, they talked a lot about geospacing uh, and open data sets, and hopefully um, we, we will use that in planning or, or any kind of services. They have a mapping applied gallery now. They have initiatives to uh, help projects 
with a GEO special um, designs and all of that is free to MVRPC members. So I would like to encourage staff to use any uh, geospatial spatial data or any GIS type of systems from MVRPC. Um, that was a push. They also um, asked our planning office, our zoning and planning, to give a feedback. Did you see this um, postcard? Mm -hmm. And for the trustees to, to give feedback to this um, MVRPC planning. And um, you had the planning conference on Friday. How did that go? I wasn't able to attend. Yes, I did. The um, annual Miami Valley uh, Planning and Zoning Conference uh, is held on the first Friday of each December at Sinclair Community College. Um, it's in its 40 plus years it's been going on. We were represented by myself and uh, the chair of our BZA, Brent okay. Huntsman, who was there. It's an all day conference. Um, with a wide range of different kinds of workshop proposals. Most of them are um, <coughs> panel discussions with lots of interaction with the audience. There was a record number of uh, folks in attendance this year, uh, planning professionals, uh, board members, trustees, and so forth, trustees and council members, pub various public officials. There was also a good representation from Members of nonprofits with interest in planning topics such as, um, well, from wetland preservation to emergency planning and preparedness um, and recovery. MVRPC is always well represented at a number of the workshop uh, sessions. Um, so, yes, we were there and it went well again. Great. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your report. MVRPC Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, the information and agenda was in your packet. Is there any questions? No. Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission of Greene County. I don't think there was a meeting. Um, we will be meeting this week, is it, to um, uh, initiate the review of the Section 5 plans for Nathaniel's Grove. So that's the commission that's is meeting Thursday. You hmm? say which day? Which d you, the commission is meeting or you're internally meeting? No, the regional planning and coordinating commission. Okay. Uh, the, it, it's this. Any review of construction plans right. has a three-tiered uh, review process, and that begins with staff review, and that's what's happening this week. And then in two weeks, Tuesday. in two weeks, the executive committee and the um, and the full commission then will act on the recommendations of the staff okay. pending the response of the developer to the recommendations from the staff review process. Okay. So it's a process that takes a month on each, at least a month for each set of plans, depending on how many comments and how serious they are and what level of revision is necessary to the plans as submitted. Okay, and that meeting is tomorrow? Yes. At, at what? Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Okay. You mean staff reviews Thursday? Staff yeah. reviews. The committee's not. That's what staff okay. reviews That's where Thursday. I was heading if I need to be there. <laughs> <laughs> committee's so, two weeks. Long story short. Right. Okay. Gotcha. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Amber. Uh -huh. Health Department, District Advisory Council, there was no meeting. School Superintendent, City Manager, Township Representative. Uh, we have a big meeting this week with the city manager of the county regarding the debris management. Um, that's on Thursday, and that's after our Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission long-term recovery meeting. So hopefully we can iron it out um, with the county commissioners on moving forward with, uh, or at least the county, uh, county administrator to go ahead and move forward with county commissioners to sign the agreement. The city's already gotten authorization to sign it. Township trustees gave me authorization, I believe, in August. So moving forward with that. Uh, schools, uh, we do have a joint meeting on the 19th at 
Wright Patterson Air Force Base Restoration and Advisory Board. Uh, that meeting is Wednesday at seven. Public meeting at the. Um, uh, I can't think of the name of the place. It's uh, of the Wright Brothers uh, Memorial up on the hill off of uh, Kaufman. Okay, thank you. Green County Township Association will have a meeting um, tomorrow. Tomorrow for Christmas, holiday, Christmas party. Christmas party. Yeah. Investment oversight. Uh, the meeting was canceled at the very last minute, mm. um, so by the bank. So, um, so if, if uh, from a rescheduled date, uh, if we can circulate some dates, I, just, I don't know availability for myself between now and the end of the year. Um, so. circulate dates in January so thank you and that's all I have at yeah. this point I'll make a motion to go into executive session under Ohio revised code section 121.22 g1 to consider the employment dismissal discipline and compensation of public employees and under Ohio revised code section 121.22 g2 to consider the purchase of property for public purposes second mr. Krebs Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. We're back on. We're back at the regular scheduled meeting coming out of executive session. I need a motion. Uh, it's 3.38 p.m. Motion to come out of executive session. Second. Mr. Price. Yes. Ms. Wallace. Yes. And the motion to adjourn at 3.38 p.m. Second. Yes. And we are adjourned. Have a have a good week.